Hi, Hi. hello. Um, hope you had a nice Christmas. Very good, thank you. Um, how are you too? Yeah, well, thanks. Um, just how nice was it though, during this very hectic period of the season, to be able to take a couple of days off for the players and for you personally? Well, it's a beautiful time of the year, especially when you have kids and they still have this uh, magic feeling about it. And uh, yeah, we had the opportunity this year because of the schedule to, to have some time off as well and, uh, and to enjoy that period in, in a different way. Lots of games coming up, so just wondering how the squad is sort of injury-wise and specifically with Thomas Party and Sakira Tomiassi, are they come any, any close to coming back? No, nothing has changed yet. Uh, with those two, we're not going to have them available, unfortunately, yet. Um, and then we have the suspension of Kai, so I think it's five players uh, missing the squad. And uh, yeah, we had a bit short, but uh, the team has been doing well and we still have a, a lot of players very willing to play. Is there a chance we could see those players before they go away on international duty for the Asia Cup or Africa There is a chance, yes. Um, but we, we have to see, they haven't trained with the team yet, so they're still far away of that, but uh, but hopefully they can evolve in the right way. And do you know when they're leaving yet? Because I know some clubs are in discussions with nations about when they can come. Yeah, there is some talks between uh, the clubs and the federations at the moment, and um, we haven't um, decided yet uh, when is the best way to do it. Um, if you win tomorrow, obviously you'll go back top of the table. You'll be top of the table at the halfway point in the season. A lot of work was made of that last season. Does it feel different this time around? Do you feel more confident this, this time, this part, this part of the season? It feels similar. It's, uh, it's always a, a really good feeling to have the chance to, to be at the top of the Premier League with understanding as well how competitive it is, that even is more competitive than last year and more difficult than last year. And uh, tomorrow we're going to have a really difficult opponent in front of us and uh, we're going to have to be at our best. Talking about the title challenge, how important is January going to be then in terms of the transfer window? Any business done, how important will it be to get it done and get it done early so you're in the best position possible? That's a different matter. We are just focusing on, on the game of tomorrow, the importance of that one, the importance of Fulham, the importance of the FA Cup, and then we'll have a, a little break there to think and assess the options that we had and how we can be better. And one more for me, just how difficult is tomorrow's game <coughs> going to be? <coughs> Good battles against West Ham in recent mm. memory, and obviously coming up against David Moyes. Very difficult. Uh, they are a really good side, really well coached. Uh, incredible the success that I had last year, the position that they are again this season. So they're showing a lot of consistency. You see the games that they beat the Spurs, they beat Manchester United, so that tells you everything and that's the difficulty of the game. And um, and tomorrow that we're going to have to be a, a really, really good. Asiria from PLP. Hello. Hi. Odegaard was strong out of possession against Liverpool. He was winning his second balls, he won the most duels. Recently he's been playing a much deeper role in midfield, helping Arsenal play at the back, and in general being a lot more influential in build-up. Um, previously he was like a second striker, being direct and much more attacking. Do you see your captain's strengths thrive more in build-up play? Well, there are certain games that require certain things from certain players, and uh, we have used Martin in to accommodate the needs that the team had against um, certain behaviours and certain challenges that the opponent puts us to to make us better, and that's a big quality of his. You have mentioned as well the defensive part, which is really impressive, and I'm really happy with that because it's a part of the game that uh, we want to transform and, and keep evolving. Uh, Martinelli's also been a great player for you, and he has a very high ceiling. Recently, there's been a lot of attention on his decision-making in front of goal or when he's in threatening areas. When it comes to young players in particular, what do you think is the best way for him to improve on these things? Or do you think it's more mentality and confidence within form at the moment? Well, being open first, um, working hard and, uh, and practicing the situation that you face in the game as much as possible and then having the courage to do it time and time and time again. And he's one of the best in the world at that. And last year, December at home against West Ham, we came back 1-0 down, we beat them yeah. 3-1. I remember the atmosphere and how the fans really lifted the squad. You have three London derbies in a row coming up, and we know that adds a little bit extra competitiveness. What's your message to the fans ahead of those games? Now, first of all, thank you for everything that they've done throughout the year and the way they have supported and inspired the team. And uh, for tomorrow, please uh, go to that stadium and... Uh, and get it rocking, get behind the team, inspire them again, and the team is going to try to do everything that we can to, to get them out of the seats. But uh, it's going to be the last game of, uh, of the year in front of them, so I think it's a special moment, so let's make it beautiful.
Okay, Mark from Pierre. Hi, Pierre. You mentioned that it feels similar to last year when you you were top of the league and everything. Do you think that you, you and your players will have learned a lesson from what happened last season that you can carry into this year? I hope so, <laughs> but we have to prove it every every day and. Uh, and the competition, it's, it's incredible this season, how difficult it is to win every single game. You can see the results and how surprised you get every time you see the scores um, on your app sometimes. And, um, and it's the beauty of this league that uh, tomorrow you're going to have to be so good again to beat West Ham and the next day to go to Fulham is going to be so tough. And, and that's the demands and that's um, where we are. You obviously know David really well. Do you think sometimes he doesn't get the... Appreciation he deserves for what he's doing in his managerial career. Obviously, when you look at managing this league that they have managed for so long, they've been more successful than him, it's not easy, you know. And how long and in the teams that he's done it as well, and how he's done it, I think. Obviously, I know him and uh, I love him a lot, and I'm so grateful for everything that uh, he did for me and the times that we had together. But I think he's an outstanding manager and he does it in a way that it's uh, in my opinion, very, very special without making too much noise. But what I have accomplished again at West Ham, I think it's remarkable. You mentioned uh, how, how long he's managed in the Premier League. He's actually the eighth longest serving manager in the whole of England at the moment with West Ham. You're, you're seventh on that list out of the whole of the 92 clubs. Is that a bit of a surprise to you that you're so high up? I'm getting old, I think, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I'm surprised, but as well, it tells you a lot, you know, how difficult this job is and, and to keep in the job and, uh, and the amount of the clubs that uh, are changing managers. And because uh, for years yeah, before, probably that number would have been very different is what it is. That's the context that we live in. And, uh, and let's keep going. OK, Kyle, come from London. Hi, Mikhail. I just wanted to ask a little bit about uh, Gabriel Martinelli. His numbers in the Champions League this season have been really impressive. He's scored or assisted in every single game. But in the Premier League, maybe not quite as high. So why do you think there's been such a difference between the two competitions? Difficult to put something into it. Um, sometimes decision making, sometimes scoring, hitting the post, missing a chance, receiving a ball to score. Our details, and he's really trying, he's, he's a massive threat for us, and, and everything that he generates, not only with the ball, without the ball as well, the amount of time that he threats in the back line, the pressure that he puts in that back line, it's, it's a key player for us, and uh, things will happen again. Can you speak about the, the courage that you have to keep going, keep trying the things to help the team. Do you think maybe when you get to that final third, that final action, maybe just there's a little bit of confidence that he's struggling with at the moment? I think confidence is not a problem for Gabby. <laughs> you know, he. Uh, sometimes the deficiency or, or putting the breakdown and, and, and lifting your head up and making that decision, you know, for everybody um, is the most difficult thing to do, you know, and find, finding that composure and timing inside the box. But uh, certainly lack of confidence or try is not going to be an issue for him. Okay, last couple in the last section. Simon from Even Standard. Um, okay, you, you're saying a bit how you know, the squad's quite tight at the moment. Looking ahead to January, do you, do you feel in a position where you can't afford to let anyone go? Well, at the moment, it's very difficult. We are really short. Uh, we have positions that um, that we've been very exposed for the last six weeks. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to get players back uh, in what condition and when. That's a question mark. And as well, because we have some long term injuries still uh, for certain players that give us a lot of versatility. And, and that's an issue. And the big thing we've seen in January with this club in the past is the way it can sort of pivot to different targets and move quickly. Do you feel yourself and Eddie have got multiple plans in place that means you can very you know, quick to move in this market if you need to be. Yeah, we have certain targets, ideas. If things happen as well, we don't know how the squad is going to look in two weeks' time, you know, and uh, and you have to be always prepared for that. But uh, it's a very, very tricky market, you know, that shifts uh, very quickly and uh, and it's quite unpredictable as well. And, uh, and you have to be prepared. We'll be prepared and we'll try to make the right calls. Is that your wish to be active though, if you can be? If there is something that we can improve the squad and, and, and that needs appear and we cannot fulfill it with players here, we're always going to be open to do that because we want to be stronger. Aaron from Barbo. Hi, Mikael. <coughs> uh, West Ham very confident on the counter-attacks. I think they're joint top for goals off counter-attacks. Obviously, Kudus, Picasso, Bowen, they formed a very deadly trio. How do you plan to stop that or prevent it from happening against your side tomorrow evening? Yeah, they are. When they have open spaces, they combine really well. They attack... Um, in certain areas and it's very tricky to control them. It's obviously the areas where you give the ball away that are critical as well because that's obviously puts them in, in a good starting position. So we'll try to nullify their strengths like they have many others as well tomorrow and try to play in our strengths.